Blood transfusion is one of the routine procedures you would be doing as a registered nurse and it's important that you understand the basics of blood transfusion. In this video, I'm going to be talking all about blood transfusion, why it is done, how it is done and what you need to take note of as the nurse doing the blood transfusion. Hi, my name is Busari Mulayo and I am a Nigerian registered nurse and midwife and I'm also a United Kingdom registered nurse. On this channel, I talk all about nursing and healthcare. So if you're interested in content like that, do click on subscribe button to join the YouTube family and also on the bell icon so you don't miss out when I drop another amazing video. Now, I have already uploaded a video where I spoke about blood group types and their compatibility. You can watch that before watching the blood transfusion or after you're done, whichever assists you. I'll put the link up here and also down in the description box below. Now, let's talk about blood transfusion. Blood transfusion is a process of transferring blood or blood products from a donor into a patient's bloodstream and this is usually done when you need to replace lost components of the blood in a patient or when there's a specific medical condition that requires the patient to be transfused there are so many indications for blood transfusion and they include acute blood loss which is when a person loses a large amount of blood in a short period of time it could be because of trauma like an accident surgery or even GIT bleeding. There's also anemia which is not responsive to other treatments when the person has low blood um, content. That could be because of hemorrhagic shock which is um, when a person goes into shock because of a loss of a large volume of blood. It could also be because of coagulation disorders such as hemophilia or disseminated intravascular coagulation. It is also part of cancer treatments. Patients who are undergoing chemotherapy or radiation therapy usually take um, blood transfusions. Bone marrow disorder is another indication for blood transfusion in conditions like leukemia or aplastic anemia. We also have severe infections when a person is having septicemia or multiple organ failure. There are different forms of blood products or type of blood products that would be transferred to a patient depending on why the patient needs to be transferred. The first type is whole blood which contains all the components of the blood, red blood cells, the white blood cells, the plasma, the platelets and everything you could think of in the blood. Next are packed red blood cells. Remember that hemoglobin is present on the surface of red blood cells and this is what oxygen binds to to be transported around in the body. So packed red blood cells are transfused in order to increase oxygen carrying capacity in the body when there is anemia or large amount of blood loss. Next are platelets which are used for patients with low platelet count such as those with leukemia or those that are undergoing chemotherapy. A patient could also be transfused with fresh frozen plasma which contains clotting factors and is usually used in coagulopathy or when there has been a massive blood transfusion. There are other types of blood products like cryoprecipitates which is rich in fibrinogen and clotting factors that are used in disseminated intravascular coagulation and massive transfusion. You also have albumin to treat hypovolemia and hypo albuminemia when there's low level of albumin in the blood then there are also granulocytes which are rarely used for when a patient has neutropenia that is unresponsive to other treatments they may be transfused with granulocytes now that you know the reasons why blood transfusion is done now let's talk about the different things you need to take note of as the nurse when you're doing a blood transfusion before starting blood transfusion, some things you need to do include patient identification, which means that you have to confirm the patient's identity, like using the name of the patient's date of birth, you confirm it with the transfusion order or prescription. You have to ensure that blood grouping and cross-matching has been done and you double check with what is written on the transfusion order with what is on the blood bag. Next thing, you ensure that you have explained the procedures to the patient, obtain informed consent, talk about the risks, the benefits to the patient before letting them consent to blood transfusion. 
Then you also record the pre transfusion vital signs, temperature, pulse, heart rate, oxygen saturation level, blood pressure, and every other necessary thing. You ensure that the patient has high V access and that the cannula used is the appropriate size and that cannula has not been there for a very long time. You ensure that it is you know still needs hygienic and the cannula site is not inflamed next thing is to inspect the blood product just for any discoloration clots or leakages around the blood bag next thing you also verify the blood bag with another healthcare professional you guys check it together to prevent any mistakes during transition you have to ensure that you're using the correct equipment and one of these is the administration line or the giving set ensure that is the blood giving set you're using which usually has a filter you start the blood transfusion slowly at about two mils per minute i know that if there is no infusion pump present and you need to count manually this may be um a bit difficult but you can just make sure that you are starting slowly for the first 15 minutes so what is not for any reactions then you can now increase the normal flow rates next you need to ensure that you are closely monitoring the patient for the first 15 minutes for any adverse reactions such as fever chills rash and hypotension and then you continue checking the vital signs of the patient every 15 to 30 minutes or depending on the hospital protocol probably hospital protocol says hourly or two hourly or i don't think it should be up to like two hourly and based on the population of the people on the ward as well then you also try to ensure that you complete the transition within four hours except when like it is prescribed otherwise then after the transition you also make sure that you do a post transfusion vital signs check appropriate documentation and you also continue to monitor the patient for any delayed reactions overall throughout the process of the blood transfusion you have to continuously document what is happening remember if it is not documented in nursing it is not done before we move on to the different adverse effects or complications that may occur during a blood transfusion i need you to know that you can access free audio lectures free practice tests towards your exams on the website www.nursingwithlight.com just go over to the website and click on your desired tabs we have nursing audio lectures we have practice tests and we also have curated materials that are targeted to help you pass your nursing counseling exams now that you understand that let's go over to the complications first we have acute hemolytic reaction which could occur due to ABO incompatibility and symptoms include fever, chills, back pain, urine, um, blood in urine that's hematuria, hypotension and the actions you should take is to stop that transition immediately, keep the IV line open with normal saline, notify the physician for the next night of action and you also send that blood back to the laboratory. You could also have febrile non-hemolytic reaction which could be due to white blood cells antibodies fighting against like the new blood you're administering and symptoms could include fever and chills and what you do is to stop that transfusion or notify the physician for the next line of action then you may have to administer antipyretics available like paracetamol. There could also be allergic reactions which could bring symptoms like rash itching and anaphylaxis and this is a very serious thing so you have to stop that transmission you may have to administer antihistamines available or epinephrine if the reaction is severe and you notify the physician for the next line of action taco which is an acronym for transfusion acetyl circulatory overload could also occur and this is what happens when blood transfusion is very very fast when you're like transfusing the blood at a very rapid rate and some symptoms of this include dyspnea, hypertension, and jugular vein distension. What you can do is to slow the transition or even stop it, reposition the patient uprightly, administer any prescribed diuretics, and notify the physician. TRALI, which is an acronym for Transfusion Related Acute Lung Injury, which is a rare but serious reaction, is also another potential complication of blood transfusion. Symptoms could include acute respiratory distress and hypoxemia, which will be evident when you check the patient's um, SpO2, that's oxygen saturation levels. And actions to take include stopping the transfusion, providing respiratory support, and notifying the physician for the next 
line of action. I know some of you may not like the way I'm including notify the physician for the next line of action. You want to say, oh, we're well, nurses should be able to handle this thing. But always remember that you are managing these patients with other healthcare professionals and you guys always have to collaborate, especially in situations like this. There could also be delayed hemolytic reaction, which happens days to weeks after the transition has been done. And symptoms could include anemia and jaundice. Actions is to monitor the hemoglobin and bilirubin levels. That means you take a blood sample, send it to the lab, consistently monitoring the hemoglobin and bilirubin levels. And the physician also has to be notified for the next line of action. I hope now you understand blood transfusion. If you want to see more of my videos, click on this playlist here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.